All right, good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is July, and one thing that I can say is that in July, it is really hot. And oops, <laughs> I forgot to put the video on mute. <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, the, July is hot, and uh, hot <laughs> is hot in a video studio. So, um, I'm under the bright lights and it's super hot and I can't have any fans running or the AC on because you can hear it in the background. So um, we might need to rethink some of these summer events because it just is way too hot. So I tried to dress somewhat cool <laughs> uh, today in my short sleeve uh, shirt. But um, hopefully you are having a good time. Hope you had a happy 4th of July. We are here with the uh, Emma Mystery Quilt Along. This is week five. This is so exciting. Um, Want to remind you that next week is a bye week. And um, what that is, so I borrowed that term from football. And what it is in football, which is a fall sport, by the way, <laughs> is that you have a week of no games, right? So you, uh, so it's a week that a team doesn't have a game, and they stagger those so that every team gets a week off. And so our bye week is next week. And so what that means for us is that there's no new monthly or no new weekly pattern so you will get pattern pages so we try to make sure that your pattern is consistently numbered so that lesson five corresponds with the fifth week and lesson six corresponds with the sixth week which is our bye week so that lesson seven is on the seventh week we used to do it to where we'd have a bye week and not print pattern pages and so then week seven would be lesson six and then it got confusing for people so it was just easier for us to introduce the bye week and give you those blank pattern pages so if you're participating in the quilt along the there is no new pattern but there is a pattern file and it's basically a, a page that says bye week <laughs> and this page intentionally left blank so th so there's that if you want to make sure that your pattern stays consistently numbered you just want to go and download that and print that out so that'll be available for you next week and because it's a bye week you guys get a week off and so do i <laughs> so there will not be a webinar next weekend so just want to make sure everybody recognizes that so we're going to be skipping the live webinar next weekend i don't know how long i'm going to be able to sit in the heat <laughs> with no air or fans running but we're going to try today it's awfully hot uh today i don't know you can see i'm kind of um i'm glowing a little bit more than i like to do um here when i am filming so Anyway, you can probably also tell that I have a little bit of a husky rasp to my voice, and that is uh, allergies. <laughs> so I think we got a late we got a late start to spring. There's also a late start to to summer. Uh, I mean, it's July and it's it's finally starting to feel like summer where it's really hot. We didn't get a spring, but my allergies are just having a field day with me. So, um, so here's hoping that you guys are not having as tough of a time as I am over here. I'm hot. I can't breathe. <laughs> I'm just full of complaints today, but we are here to have a little bit of fun uh, just sewing and chatting together. So hopefully you're with me on that point. Let's see. So Mary's joined us. Hi, Mary. Good morning. All right. So today's, um, not today, this week, the pattern this week involved Y seams. And so you've actually had two weeks in a row of Y seams, if you didn't <laughs> kind of realize it. So last week we talked a lot about English paper piecing and the English paper piecing is Y seams, but you're doing those Y seams by hand. So maybe they don't seem as intimidating because you can kind of manipulate them and you've got you know your hands on everything. But when you're doing Y seams, this week is Y seams piecing machine piecing and so I want to make sure that you get to see those uh, tips so if you haven't done Y seam piecing before and it's kind of intimidating I've got a couple of uh, tips for you 
And uh, I learned this um, process from uh, Gailene Fitzgerald, who's a good friend of mine. Um, she teaches this um, this technique a lot in her classes, but she does um, she does this this a lot. And she's got some other cool stuff that she shows you in her class. But I'm gonna just show you the um, the you know not like revealing all the stuff that she does but if why seems intimidate you there's a there's just a couple of tips that um that might help so and if you ever get a chance to take a class with Gailene please please do she is absolutely amazing she does does just really amazing um work so so this week we had um where did I find this? Okay, so this block, this is known traditionally as um, Attic Windows, I believe is the name. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's a, um, it's, it's a mitered corner, essentially. And you can't really see the, the seam. Wow, it's like, it's so bright. It's so bright in here, it's hiding the seam line. But there's a, let me see if I can, how about I show you the back? Um, there's the seam there. You can see the seam line um, in the back. So it's a miter corner. So this square is set in. Um, so this technique will, um, you know, kind of give you a miniature, it's like a miniature border mitering technique. Um, so that's one type of Y seam. And if you wonder why it's called a Y seam, if you kind of turn this um, sideways, you can see, I'll show it to you from the back, <laughs> the letter Y. So there's the two um, sides and then the, um, the bottom is a Y seam. And then our other block, this one kind of looks more like what you would consider a Y seam and you can kind of see that Y very prominent um, there. So those were the two Y seams that we were dealing with. And so that's what we're going to be um, working on today. So I just want to show you how, uh, how that works. So, and I remembered my seam guide <laughs> today. So, uh, so we have been working with the ideal seam guide and uh, the, the, I actually carry the student set um, on my site. So it comes with the ideal seam gauge, the curved seam guide, and the straight seam guide. And so this is necessary for my machine in particular because it's a featherweight. And so it doesn't have, my stitch plate does not have seam markings on it. The foot that I have, and I know like I could just change the foot and find a quarter inch foot and just install a quarter inch foot and that would work just fine. But um, in this case, I do not have a quarter inch foot for this machine and this has been problematic for us for the past couple of of times that i've been sewing so i finally remembered to grab my ideal seam guide from um, out of my portable little sewing case and um bring that here so i'm going to install that on the featherweight so i can actually show you how to do this y seam and if you've never seen the install i'll try to i don't know if you're going to be able to see the actual install but i'll kind of walk through what i'm doing on it it's going to be hard to see because of where the camera is positioned on the machine but we can kind of talk through what that looks like on the um on the featherweight so let's uh pop over to the we're gonna pop over to the featherweight and i'm gonna scooch over a little bit so i can actually get to the machine and go this way okay so Part of the, and I'm going to move the microphone too. So part of what the seam gauge is, is there are holes in the seam gauge for the needle position. And so you want to find, so there's an, uh, an eighth inch, a scant quarter inch, a quarter inch, and um, others. So all the way up to a one inch seam allowance. And what you do is you put the i'm going to move my little starter here so you put the seam gauge under your needle so this will go under your presser foot and under the needle and i'm going to set this to because i'm sewing um i'm just going to set this to a uh, scant quarter inch and that is because i'm dealing with uh, triangles and the thing about this guy is 
and you actually have to hang on let me find let me find the needle hole and then I'll talk to you about it okay and I don't want to put the um I don't want to put the take the foot off cuz then I have to find a screwdriver to take the foot off and I'm getting kind of a reflection here so it's really hard for me to see the hole where the needle is trying to go into. I'm having such a hard time here. Hang on. Um, there we go. Oh my goodness. That was tough. Okay, so, um, and you may not um, be able to get the needle all the way in to the hole. So don't try to roll it all the way down and back up. You just want to um, get the needle positioned in the hole so that the gauge doesn't move. So if I try to move this, you see I can't move it because the needle is down in the hole. I'm not trying to do a whole cycle. I'm just trying to put it down enough so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't move. So now that that's positioned and you wanna make sure that that's um, straight. And so you can kind of eyeball the the edge here along the edge of your foot and just make sure that's straight. And then you want to take the ideal seam guide. So I'm going to use the straight one. And this has a plastic cover on the back because the, the, the back of this is sticky. So it comes with this plastic cover and you want to keep, hang on to the plastic cover because you may want to reapply the, the protective cover at some point. So peel this off and I will say the back of this um, too is um, if it gets dirty, um, you can, um, I believe you can wash this and uh, kind of get the tackiness back. Um, and this won't, um, the adhesive that's on the back of this isn't going to damage the surface um, of your, um, you know, of your featherweight. So, um, so you can go ahead and just apply this and it's really just sticking to the seam plate. I'm not trying to like actually adhere it to the whole, um, you know, to the whole thing, but I want to get it over the seam plate so that it's nice and um, tight there. And then I can take my foot up, raise my needle here and remove the seam guide or the seam gauge, okay? So now I have my stitch plate and I can see here where it is, um, it, there's so much to the quarter inch seam that I was missing when I was eyeballing it the last time, you guys. So, um, so that's really, that's really fun. Okay, so um, what I wanna show you is the first, you know what, before, before we actually get to this, cause I had a question about cutting and the cutting instructions. And I forgot my dye, I forgot the dye, <laughs> but um, but I'm gonna post pictures. I took a few pictures yesterday and um, cause there were some questions about the, the instructions on how to cut the pieces for, for the Y seam. So cutting the trapezoid. So let's talk, let's just walk through that a little bit before I get to the sewing. So I'm going to switch over to our little flat board here. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So the question that came up yesterday was about the, the pieces. And darn it, if I did not actually... Okay, bear with me one minute. I actually have to leave the frame here. <laughs> but um, I have to grab some fabric to cut. I don't know where my head is at. It's not one thing, it's another. Hang on one second. Okay, I was trying to find some fabric. Uh, to cut with. So I have a little bit of fabric up here in the studio. So the instructions talked about cutting a four and five, a four and seven eighths inch wide strip, right? So let me cut. Um, this piece is, um, is a little bit larger than thin. Um, 
um, it's almost five inches. I think it's five inches. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut this to two and a half. And so we'll cut it to two and a half and you can only do that if you have a rotary cutter. There it is, all right. All right, so we're gonna cut this to two and a half inches and then to four, four and seven eighths. Okay, and the reason for the seven eighths inch marking is because we are going to be cutting an angle off of this. So that's why it's cut to four and seven eighths, okay? So you cut a four and seven eighths inch strip. I know I didn't do that, I just had one piece. And then you are to cut the, um, and you need, so for this first one, so we're gonna pretend like this is fabric number four um, in the pattern. So, um, so the idea here is that if you need, I'm gonna cut another piece here. If you need a, um, a left and a right unit from both, uh, from the same piece of fabric. So this is the idea behind this block where I need a, a left unit and a right facing unit for both um, or for that block. So I need two of these and I know this is a batik fabric and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker and I am going to mark. It's hard to see left and right or, or it's hard to see wrong side right side on solids and on batiks. And so I'm gonna mark this, um, um, let's call this right side, okay? I don't know that this is specifically the right side, right? But we're just gonna call it right side, okay? So where I have written RS, that's gonna be the right side of the fabric. So the way that this works, and I know this is gonna be upside down for you because the camera, is in front of me looking down and so this is going to be a little bit um, a little bit backwards but it's kind of like aerobics class where you have to do um, do what the instructor is doing but opposite <laughs> unless they turn around so the way that this works is you need to stack these um, wrong sides together so we're going to take our right sides and so the right sides are, are opposite so we've got the wrong sides together so you are stacking these wrong sides together and then you want to and we're cutting these as pairs and you want to take the 45 degree line on your ruler so this is my creative grids ruler and the 45 degree line is marked it's labeled 45 degrees I know you can't see that on the camera but it's labeled 45 degrees and you want that, just I need a little bit more room in here. Okay, so the way that this works is you take the 45 degree line, so that's this line here, and you want the 45 degree line along the bottom of your rectangle. So my ruler, I know this is backwards for you on camera, but note that my, my ruler is at an angle to my piece here, to my rectangle. So I'm taking the 45 degree line and aligning that on the straight edge of the bottom of my rectangle. And then I want the corner to be at the corner of the rectangle. So this is the piece that I'm going to cut off, okay? So this is a 45 degree angle here, okay? So that's what I'm going to cut off here, okay? And that's what gives me my trapezoids. And so because I laid those wrong sides together, I end up with a left and a right hand trapezoid. And the way that I remember this is if you have the trapezoids facing you, you know, it's like the whole, you know, bread, bread drink trick that you have. I do left, right. 
right? This is, you know, how, and again, this is backwards <laughs> on the camera because the camera's in front of me, but this is my left hand. And so when I do this, I call this my left facing trapezoid because the this forms the 90 degree angle and then this is off at an angle. So I call this a left facing trapezoid and this one I call a right facing trapezoid because this fits in the angle and then that's what's cut off. So I try to remember this left facing, right facing and that's what's going to give me that mitered angle. So I need both of these to be able to do that. Okay, now with these, you know, the way that these are sewn together, if you want to make this angle, they're folded right sides together and you stitch along this line. We're not gonna do that yet, but that's how you get the two, um, the, the left and the right facing ones. So I'm gonna cut one more and um you know and so this is when you need ones that are opposite so i'm going to do this again and i'm going to cut again i need my four and seven eighths by two and a half okay so this is in this case i have a five inch strip that i'm cutting down so we're going to cut this down to four and seven eighths and this is in the pattern instructions. It talks about this. It's There's not a visual in there to show you how to make this, this cut, but it explains how to make the cut. And like I said, I will post, I have pictures of this that I can post to the photo tutorials. For those of you who are working on Emma, I'll make sure that you get photos of how to cut this um, in there because it can be a little bit um, it can be a little bit confusing so my piece isn't perfectly straight but this is just I'm not sewing with these I'm just done okay so again I'm gonna write because this is a batik I'm just gonna write right side so we're just gonna pretend like these are right sides so in the you know so this is the one that we're making okay so I want in here just so we kind of stick with the color a little bit. This will be the, um, you know, this will be my my um, left facing one, and this will be the right facing one. Okay, so for the left facing one that I need, in order to get this left facing one, I actually need this to be wrong sides up. Okay, so this. I need to lay wrong sides up to get the left facing one and I know this seems backward but I need wrong side to be facing up in order to get the left facing trapezoid okay so again and if you want to cut a couple of these at a time you can stack them but you have to stack them wrong sides up okay so they all have to face the same direction or in order to get them to go the uh, the correct direction so for this one it's the same thing I align the 45 degree line on the the bottom of my rectangle and I want the corner of the ruler at the corner of my rectangle and then I'm just cutting off this triangle here okay so now this is my remember right side this is my left facing rectangle so that's what I needed to cut to get a right facing rectangle, the right side faces up, okay? So that's this one. So this time I'm cutting with the right side facing up, aligning the 45 degree line on my ruler, the corner of the ruler at the corner of the rectangle, and then cut that angle, okay? So that's my right facing, okay? So that's how I get this the shapes that I need for this block okay now for die cutting the Sizzix die and again I don't have that die with me and I apologize but the Sizzix die is the opposite <laughs> okay so the Sizzix die if you need and that's because the the trapezoid that's on there is um, is facing the opposite direction so um, and the way that it's that it's cutting the angle, it's the same angle. It's just that because 
the die is is facing the opposite direction, um, you're going to cut in a different way. So I'm gonna post those photographs. So it's just the opposite. Um, so I will post the photographs uh, and, and uh, I did that in the group. I will post the photographs to the, um, to the tutorial. And so I'm just looking on my camera because I wanna make sure that I'm telling you um, the right um, the right thing. So, you know, so here, so I'm just gonna show this to you on the phone. So you can see that this guy is facing the opposite direction <laughs> on the die. So the die is actually, the shape is, is facing this way, where when we're cutting with the rotary ruler, the shape is facing this way. So that's why the die is, you have to cut it the opposite um, direction because think of the die as actually being upside down. <laughs> I know that's a really weird way to think about it, but the die, the shape on the die is upside down from the way that the rotary cutter um, is. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is that, again, you know, sometimes when you have um, um, kind of, CAD designers versus quilters <laughs> laying out dies, that tends to happen. Um, you know, that can happen sometimes where, you know, it's not necessarily laid out the way that you would think of laying it out as a quilter. So, um, so that, like I said, I will post that to the classroom, but if you needed that assistance, and that's with the Sizzix die. I don't have the, um, I don't have the AccuQuilt die for that shape. Um, so I can't tell you if it's backwards or not, but basically what I would recommend is that you label the die. So I don't know if you were able to see that on my picture, but I'll kind of enlarge this a little bit. I know this is a weird way to kind of show, but on my die, I have labeled, you know, I've created a little picture where I say, if I want a left facing trapezoid, right side up. If I want a right facing trapezoid, right side down. So every time I pick up this die, if I know which, which trapezoid I'm trying to cut, this is a little visual reminder. So when I just write that on my die with a silver Sharpie. So hopefully that's helpful, just kind of showing you how to cut those. And like I said, I will picture, I will post those pictures onto the classroom so that you have those for future reference. Okay. So now that we've got that, and it looks like Donna's joined us. Hi, Donna. That's so exciting um, that Donna has joined us. So, and I'm just going to pop over to Facebook for a second just to see if anyone has posted uh, comments. I don't see any comments or questions in the Facebook group either. So, so we can move on there. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have any other questions about cutting, those uh, let me know but like I said I will take those pictures and post them to the photo tutorial in the classroom so that you have that okay awesome so let us go back to here so we talked about sewing these so I've got my seam guide installed here okay and I've got my pieces somewhere over here Oh, and you know what I did? <laughs> I just completely went through and um, I actually sewed all of these pieces. So um, there's, um, so the this first piece, this attic windows piece, I actually have this piece already stitched. So let's talk about what I did with this one. So I'm just gonna, sorry, I have to swap over to the other camera to show this to you. So the way that I did this, so this is the, the left facing trapezoid with the square. And so what I did with the square is I laid the square and matched up the edges here and stitched with a quarter inch seam allowance and I stitched the full seam. So the pattern instructions, and I think what I said in the classroom is that you know, the pattern shows you one way. This is a different way. Neither one of them is wrong, but you have to decide which technique you want to adopt. So the pattern tells you to mark a quarter of an inch 
from the edge and stop sewing there. And the way that I'm going to show you is you stitch the full seam. Okay, so you can just chain piece these all the way down and then you press the seam toward the square. Okay, so I didn't get to show you that part on the machine, but that's basically what it is, is you stitch uh, the whole seam all the way down and you press toward the square. Okay, so now I need to add my top unit in order to get the miter. And so what I'm going to do is stitch the, all right, which, um, you know, you can kind of pick which seam you want to do, but I like to stitch this angle next. And so this angle is going to be a little bit easier uh, to stitch first. So either way, like we have to do this set in seam, but I prefer to stitch this angle first. So to do that, we lay the trapezoids right sides together. And so you want to make sure that these are lined up. So it's just lay the trapezoid on top of it and we're going to stitch this angle, okay? And where I'm gonna stop sewing is I'm actually gonna cross over the seam allowance. I'm not gonna stitch the whole seam, but I am going to cross over the seam allowance here. So I'm gonna cross over it by like one or two stitches. You don't have to go far, okay? So if I'm over here, I can stitch this. And yeah, my seam guide's gonna be a little bit awkward because of the, um, the rectangle that's already attached, but we're just gonna go ahead and stitch this. And this is so great. I'm so excited that I remembered my seam guide. I forgot everything else, but I remembered the seam guide. So, so that's something. All right, so we're gonna come up here, and like I said, I'm gonna cross the seam allowance but I really just want to do one or two stitches and not go much further. Okay, so let's see. I've just got my uh, little starter stopper here a little bit tangled, but all right, so we're gonna pull this out and I'm just going to do another little stopper starter there. Oh, you know what? I forgot to switch to the camera. So let's do that again. <laughs> All right. So I was over here sewing and um, because you can't, I can't hear you guys. <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to do that again. All right. So we're going to take the two pieces. See, this is good. It's good that I actually stitched a few of these together because then I get to do this uh, over again. All right. So these are right sides together and I'm just stitching the angle. And like I said, the, the well, you know, I don't know if it makes sense to do this again. I'll just do it anyway. But um, you kind of can't see from this angle. But I am just stitching the quarter inch seam allowance. And let me get this little, this little guy out of the way. And it's a little bit awkward with the rectangle because of the seam guide. But, you know, you just want to make sure that you can Keep that bumped up against the seam guide and then you're going to stitch onto the intersection but just go one or two stitches you don't need to go all the way just one or two stitches and then back under we go okay and I'm going to release that all right so now I can switch back to this camera and show you so I've stitched that seam I know it's a little bit hard to see because I'm using a cream thread on a creamy white background, but that's my quarter inch seam and I've stitched it from corner to the intersection. And I'm, if I flip this over, I have stitched onto that intersection. So can you see where those two are crossed? There we go, camera. So you can see where those two seams are crossed. So what I want to do now is I'm going to take my seam ripper and this is one place where you know we actually don't mind using the seam ripper. The seam ripper is a tool not to hide our mistakes but to help us in our precision and I can't get the top off <laughs> of the seam ripper. It's in there really good. All right so this is where sometimes uh, teeth come in handy. All right so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my seam ripper and I'm going to pull out the stitches that where they cross. So we were looking at this point here. So I'm going to pull out those stitches and then I'm going to pull out the one or two stitches that are here. Okay. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just coming in here and using the seam ripper to pull out those two stitches. I'm not cutting the thread. I'm just pulling out the stitches. So I'm doing a little bit of unsewing here and I'm doing it in both places so that I've cleaned up that intersection. Can you see that? You can't see that. I'm going to move the threads out of the way. Okay, so I've cleaned up that intersection. So I've pulled those stitches out. So now I have a perfectly intersected seam. Okay, so then I'm going to, and here I don't press at this point. What I need to do is I need this edge on this edge. So I have to rotate this top trapezoid around and align these two edges. And this can be a little bit hard to um, kind of visualize unless you're doing it. So if you're not at your computer, or sorry, if you're not at your sewing machine with your pieces, replay this video so you can be at your sewing machine with your pieces and you can watch this. So all I did is I picked up the top trapezoid and it's this edge that has to get stitched here. So I want to pull this over and before I start manipulating that, I just want to get my edges straight over here. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put pins in just to make sure that that corner stays straight. So pin if you want to until you get the hang of this. Okay, so now I can come in and kind of manipulate this edge. So I'm going to pick up this and kind of create a little square um, edge here, but what I'm looking for is to just get these seams out of the way so I can match up the this corner, okay? And you're not gonna, you know, obviously the square is um, kind of going a little bit past our trapezoid here, but the point is that you wanna get those seams out of the way so that you can stitch this trapezoid to the square. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And then what I like to do is, I know I've pinned this um, on the opposite side, but, and actually I have my seam gauge, right? So I actually have to move my pins anyway. So I'm gonna flip the pins over. Uh, Cause remember last week in the webinar, I talked about if you have a physical seam guide on your, on the bed of your machine, you can't have your pins sticking out to the right because you'll run over them. So I've just flipped my pins over and I'm gonna stitch from the raw edge of the square to the intersection. And again, when I, when I stitch this seam, I'm going to cross this intersection, okay? I'm not gonna stitch all the way, I'm just gonna stitch like one stitch past, okay? So that's going to go in the machine and we're going to stitch that edge. So all I did was flip my pins over so that my seam guide wouldn't get in the way. Okay, so here I go. And we're just following the seam guide and let me cut this so this isn't in the way visually here. All right, so I'm just coming down and just stitching here and I don't want to run over my pen but I'm stitching here and then boom this is my one stitch past the intersection okay and then underneath my spider and off it goes okay so here is my unit stitched and I had a little wayward thread out of the way. So there's my unit stitched and notice that on this end, I did cross the intersection, but I just went like one stitch past, okay? And I'm not gonna worry about that. I don't need to pull out that stitch. I just wanna make sure that I cross over that intersection, 
okay? And then the last step is the pressing. So for this one, we can press toward the square, okay? And then when you, or sorry, press away from the square on this one. And then what'll happen is this seam will kind of tell you which way it wants to go. So we get that pressed down and, uh, and, and uh, I'm gonna end up pressing, repressing that first seam. Okay. And that's okay if you, uh, if you repress that first seam. So essentially, um, this one, did I, I don't know, did I press that one? Um, yeah, I, I pressed it the opposite way. So, and it's fine. Um, but the way that your seam is going to want to lay flat is it will want the square to be flat. Okay, and then this guy is going to flop to the right, okay, as it faces you. So that's how this block wants to be pressed. So I don't worry about if I have to repress seams to get the block to lay flat. So, you know, part of the pressing, that initial pressing that we did was just to get this, um, to get it, we're manipulating the block so that it's easier for us to sew. So there's the pressing that we do for sewing and then there's the pressing that we do for um, block flatness and squareness. So that's the attic windows. So if you need to see that again, just rewind the video. But essentially it is, you are stitching You are stitching the square, stitching the full seam, pressing that away. Then you're adding your top trapezoid right sides together so it goes this way. And you're stitching this seam and you're stitching one to two stitches past the intersection here or over that seam allowance. And then from the back, you're pulling out the stitches until they just meet then you're taking your top trapezoid and matching the edges, getting that squared up, and then stitching that seam until you cross one stitch over and then pulling that out and pressing it. So that is kind of fast motion doing those Y seams. Okay, so that is that block. So I'm gonna stop for a second and we're gonna just see if anybody has any questions. <laughs> All right, it looks like Trish has joined us. Hi, Trish. Good to see you. So I'm gonna pop over. I don't see any questions in the window here. And if I pop over to Facebook, I'm not seeing any questions over there either. So, and that's perfectly fine. You guys are pretty quiet today. Hope you had a good holiday. So that is that Y seam block. We do have another Y seam block that we are working on. So let me just get myself situated over here because I have pieces just flying, they're flying everywhere. Okay, so the next block that we had was with two trapezoids and a triangle. This is a quarter square triangle. So instead of these two guys, you still need a left and a right hand unit, but instead of these guys meeting in the mitered corner, we actually have them next to each other with this triangle inserted. Okay, so for this one, we're going to stitch the triangle seam first. So we'll stitch this one first, okay? So I'm laying my unit. Oh, and actually, haha, -ha, let's do this. You know what? 
No, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just confused myself for a second. I was like, do I have these right? And actually, what's great about solids is that if I did have this backward, I could just do this and, you know, everything would be fine. But uh, you can't do that with prints. So you want to make sure that you get the, the correct left and right triangle. So that, or left and right trapezoid. So that, I just had to just double check that because I had a little... I had a little brain <laughs> brain hiccup there for a second okay so laying the triangle right sides together I'm going to stitch this angle first so those go right sides together and I'm stitching this angle so let's pop over to the machine and this is a really quick stitch it's a short seam these can be you know, sometimes these can be a little bit hard to chain stitch, but this first seam, you can always chain stitch these on the first seam. Actually doing the Y seam is a little bit harder to chain piece. You can still do it. You just have to pull your, pull your units out um, a little bit. So, you know, so if I were chain piecing the, the, uh, the Y seam, part I would have to pull my unit out a little bit before I add the next one so that um, I can kind of get them get them out of the way okay so that's the first one okay and for this one this is also sorry I have to keep moving the camera this is also one where you do need to keep kind of changing which way you press the seam so for this one the seam is going to get pressed toward the triangle. So, and this is just, I'm using this seam also to kind of help me figure out, you know, where to stop sewing when I'm working on the next unit, okay? So for this one, the next stitch is going to be this straight unit, okay? So this is where I take my other trapezoid and again this is right sides together here and so I'm stitching this seam and just like on the previous one I'm going to stitch one or two stitches beyond the intersection so to do that I'm actually going to sew it this way so I'll actually be able to see um, rather than just kind of you know feeling when I go over the hump I'll be able to see when I get to this point so I'm going to stitch this straight seam and just one or two stitches beyond the intersection here. Okay, so let's get our spider out of the way. And we're gonna stitch this one. And again, this can be, it's a little bit, oh, sorry. <laughs> I gotta remember to switch the camera. So this one again, because it's, you know, I have a seam guide here, it's a little bit harder to, and uh, sorry, I gotta get my spider out of the way. Uh, it's a little bit harder to keep against the seam guide because I've got this little flappy piece over here, but you know, try to ignore that and just follow your seam allowance. And there's my one stitch beyond, and I can pull this out, get my spider back in. Okay. So that is this this seam here and so now remember the intersection I want to clean up that intersection and just use my seam ripper to rip back so that those guys just cross okay so I'm pulling out one. so it's like three stitches on this intersection so just pulling that out, cleaning up that intersection so that the, the units just meet. I'm not clipping the threads. I'm just, you know, I don't want it to fray, you know. I don't want to unravel the seam. I just want to get the threads back so that they just meet in the corner. Okay, and then my last seam is the triangle to the trapezoid that I just added. So again, I'm just going to manipulate these and get the angles, you know, get worry about matching the edges, the straight edges here. 
So I'm worrying about that first before I worry about the, uh, the other pieces. And again, I'm pinning backwards because uh, I don't want to, um, I can't have pins sticking out into my sewing area because of the seam guide. So if you don't have a seam guide, a physical seam guide, you can pin however you want. But I'm pinning these, uh, I'm putting the pins into the fabric so that they're on the fabric rather than the heads sticking out on the outside. And that's just so they don't interfere with the seam gauge. And again, I'm gonna stitch from, so I flip this over so I can stitch from the tip to the inner section and I just wanna go one or two stitches beyond. Okay, so I've just kind of pushed this other trapezoid out of the way so I can stitch this. Okay, so back to this camera and you know my spider's kind of in the way, but we'll get that out of the way. It's so hard to get a good angle for sewing <laughs> on camera. And it's like, where do you put the camera so that you can actually see the sewing? And that's something that I continue to work through. Okay, so there's my two stitches. All right, and out it comes. Oh, haha, I usually remember to put my spider back in um, to do this. And the reason I like to use a spider on the featherweight is because I forget to hold my threads and then I create a mess underneath. So I try to keep a spider uh, in the machine because I'm someone who forgets that on the featherweights you have to hold the threads to start. All right, so out come my pins. And so here is my stitch. And you can see I've gone like one or two stitches past. I don't need to pull out those stitches. They're not hurting anything being in there. Whereas those first two stitches, the reason I pull those out is so that this corner is free to move so that that seam allowance can be manipulated. So now I wanna press and, you know, again, this is figuring out which way does this want to lay flat. And so when I'm feeling this on the back, this straight seam wants to go that way. So I'm going to press this seam, the direction that it wants to go. And then these two actually want to be flat this way. Okay, so that and here we go. And I have to keep remembering that this iron is an auto shut off. So that's part of why I'm not getting a really good press because it, it keeps kind of shutting down. But that's how I want to press these so that it's nice and flat. So, and it's a press, not an iron. I know that was a little bit of ironing um, there, um, but that's the way that it wants to lay flat is for the triangle to be, you know, kind of completely visible. And then this seam will flop to the side. So play around with those, but you can see that, you know, that intersection is just absolutely spot on. And part of that for me is without marking because here's what happens when you mark sometimes you mark and your dot is too big and so like where do you stop in the dot um, if you stop in the wrong place on the dot either you stop sewing too soon or you've gone too far and you know then it's a little bit harder to manipulate and it's frustrating and to me it adds time so there's time in marking the pieces um, in that technique and then in this one there's time using your seam ripper to pull those couple of, of stitches out. So for me, I find this technique to be way more accurate and a little bit easier to manipulate than that, uh, you know, than stopping on a dot. Because your dot has to be in the exact precise place you have to stop on that dot. And for me, it's a little bit easier to just stitch beyond where that dot might be and then pull out my stitches where I see those, those seams intersecting. So that is the 
kind of Y scene technique that I cover in the photo tutorial that is uh, different from what is shown in the pattern. But I encourage you to figure out, you know, which way works for you. You know, the thing about sewing, what I love about our quilt alongs is that we try different techniques together. And, you know, you may not like the technique that I just showed you, but at least you had a chance to try it and see if it works for you. So if you've had trouble with Y seams, there's a technique that's in the pattern. There's a technique that I just showed you and you know you can just see what works for you okay so Trish says you make it look so easy when I get to the machine I'll be all thumbs you know it's the the nice thing Trish is that you can just have you know take this video with you have it playing while you're working pause it when you need to pause it you know and just you know and just try it and it's it is a practice sometimes um you know, and it's it's kind of a visual thing too, because you're looking to see like, you know, um, you're manipulating these pieces, and it's like which edge goes to which edge, and I'm not quite sure which way is which. Um, so just you know, if that worries you, take some scraps and try it um, and try it with the scraps. But um, what's also nice about these is so I know you know my trapezoids are die cut, so they're dog eared. But this technique does not require dog-eared um, units um, because you're laying those right sides together and, and it's really the intersections that you're worried about and not the outside um, edges. So you don't have to dog-ear them, but if you want to dog-ear them, um, the uh, corner trimmer, the Marty Michelle corner trimmer that you have, this is a 45 degree angle, so you can use that to trim those corners if you want to um, trim those off. So. Donna says, you've solved the mystery for me. Thanks. You're so welcome. Um, and Mary says, I seem to have lost my quilting mojo this summer, hoping that this new technique will be just the challenge I need to get back into it. Oh God, Mary, I know exactly how you feel. Sometimes you just don't feel like it. I think part of it is the weather. Like it's, it's so hot here in the Midwest that it's just like, oh, I don't want to move or do anything. I just want to lay under the ceiling fan or under the air conditioning and just not do anything. So hopefully you get that back. But you know, if you don't, don't worry about it too much. You know, it's, you know, quilting, it comes, you know, it comes and goes. But if this does motivate you to get back into sewing, it's time for my allergy medication, I can tell. Um, if it's, you know, if this helps you get back, then I'm so happy um, to hear that. So. Awesome. So I'm just going to check one more time in the group to see if any, um, if any, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Anybody has posted in the group. I just lost my train of thought there for a second. I'm just going to check just one more time to see if anybody in the group has posted any questions. But uh, let's see. All right, no questions in the group. I'm gonna check the, um, oh, Mary says it's cooler here today by pouring rain. Oh gosh, I wish it were raining here right now. <laughs> it is so dang hot. So Mary's up in Wisconsin and I think we got that storm yesterday. It was raining here yesterday. So, you know, so have that rainstorm um, there. So awesome. So that is, you know, that is the, the webinar today. So just remember next week, we are on a bye week, so there will not be a, a webinar on Saturday, but we will pick back up with uh, with week seven or lesson seven, and that'll be in two weeks. So hopefully this is good for you. And like I said, I'll get those pictures posted. I know I've got um, week three. I've got those pictures too. So, uh, so I'll get the lesson three photo tutorials. I'll get those posted. And then I have, uh, you know, these guys, the cutting instructions so I'll get those pictures posted in the classroom and then we'll get this webinar up online but it's been so fun chatting with you and seeing you guys have a happy happy Saturday enjoy the rest of the weekends and you know if you have any questions or you need any help remember to post in the group that's a great place to uh, ask questions your fellow students will help you if you're not even taking a class right now, you can still post in the group. We don't mind. It is facebook.com slash groups slash D-A-M-Q-A. 
which stands for Designers and Makers Quilting Academy. So join us on Facebook. If you haven't signed up for Emma, it's on the website. Just go to lovebookstudios.com. Click on classes and events on the left-hand menu, Mystery Quilts, Emma. So it's a little bit of a longer path. You know, it's like four clicks, <laughs> but, uh, but you will get to uh, Emma. So you're welcome to sign up with us at any point in time. So hope you have enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun. Enjoy the rest of your quilting weekend. Bye.